Did you know that everything in Christianity hinges not on a teaching or a philosophy, but on a singular event that happened in history? It is not the birth of Jesus, although it's important, nor the great miracles of Christ, which is again important, but not even the crucifixion is the one that holds everything in Christianity. It is the resurrection of Jesus. You take out the resurrection of Christ and everything will crumble in the Christian faith and in the Christian world. The event of the resurrection is the epicenter of the Christian faith. And I cannot imagine our faith as Christians without the resurrection or Easter. I cannot imagine believing and putting my trust on someone who has been conquered by death. But we have a good news today, and the great news is that Jesus is with the Father, seated at the right hand of God, interceding for each and every one of us. And no wonder Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he declared with all pride, because Jesus rose from the dead, <clears throat> Our effort and our labor in God will never be in vain. Today, I will, talk, I will talk about the backstory of Easter, that the main event is the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. But there are many stories surrounding, when I say backstories of Easter, these are the background events that happened that will culminate or contribute to the main event, which is the resurrection. There were two disciples, secret if I may call them secret disciples. And probably for some of you, this will be the first time you would hear their names. For some of us, we have already read their names and we have not paid attention so much on the stories of do, these two secret disciples that I believe are part of the backstory of the resurrection of Jesus. And they played a crucial and important role in ensuring that the Easter or resurrection will happen because God used them, these two secret disciples. Okay, are we ready? It all started one evening, according to John. John recorded in his gospel, and he said, There was a man of a Pharisee, of the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. So here comes John introducing a person to us. He is not an ordinary person. He's a he was a Pharisee. You know, the Pharisees are one, if they're not the most strictest religious sect in Israel, because one of their basic belief is they don't associate with common people, with sinners. If you read some commentaries about Pharisees, they even, they even describe the common people, the ordinary Jews, as fuels for hell. Nicodemus is part of this sect. And not only that, to make it more uh, interesting, he is part of the Jewish ruling council. If, if we are in the Philippines, that can be the Senate. Or in Singapore, he's a member of the parliament. So with a higher... Uh, status and position in society. And apparently, John is introducing to us in the next verses that in the group of Pharisees, there is a subgroup. A subgroup of Pharisees who are already interested about the teachings of Jesus. Secretly, they are meeting and they are considering and listening, uh, investigating and searching the scripture about the, this rabbi from Nazareth. So one day, maybe they decided, this subgroup decided to send Nicodemus, one of them, to really investigate and hear firsthand. They sent Nicodemus with a question to verify something about Jesus Christ. So this is what the story is all about. They chose to go to Jesus at night. John said he came to Jesus at night probably because they're afraid of being associated as followers of Christ. You're part of the religious sect of Israel. You don't want to be labeled as, are you one of them? And here comes Nicodemus saying, Rabbi, take note of that. No, they don't, they don't just call people Rabbi because of their high standard of righteousness and holiness. It means to say, when, when Nicodemus acknowledged Jesus as a Rabbi, it means that we're saying, we are acknowledging you are a teacher, a spiritual teacher. And look at that. He said, we, I'm not coming here, Lord. Jesus, I'm not coming here on my own. I am representing a group. I am coming in behalf of the subgroup who are considering you and we believe that you're not from the devil, you're from God. You know, Jesus Christ was being accused most of the time by the listeners as saying, you are doing this in the power of Beelzebub or the devil. And, but this group, 
Nicodemus, where he belonged, the subgroup, we don't believe that you come from, from the devil. We actually believe you come from God. Why was he saying that? For no one could perform such miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with you. Obviously, they considered all the miracles and the teachings of Jesus. They would investigate, double-check, confirm it in the scripture, and they would analyze the events that are surrounding Jesus. And they concluded that it's impossible that you come from the devil. You come from God because no one can do such miracle things if God is not with you. But Jesus, look at the next verse. Jesus went straight to the very reason of Nicodemus. In reply, he said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born, born again. Maybe Nicodemus was saying, how did you know? What am, I, what am I about to ask you? And Nicodemus was struggling. How can a man be born, born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Can you please explain? Because remember this, he was a Pharisee. All the while, Jesus, we were brought up as Pharisees that the way into heaven, the way into the kingdom of God is by observing the law. You don't expect me to go into my mother's womb for the second time to be born? You would see the discussion of the conversation of Jesus and, and this ruler. Obviously, Nicodemus could not understand what Jesus was talking about. As if he was saying, Lord, can you explain some more? Can you explain some more, Lord? I, I cannot understand. Do you mean I have to enter again for the second time in my mother's womb and be born? Jesus continued by saying, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit with a capital S. If there is one very, very important truth or topic for all the Jewish people in the time of Jesus, that is the kingdom of God. Nicodemus' purpose of coming to Jesus, guys, is we want to know, Lord, what is your point of view? What is your teaching for a person to enter into the kingdom? And here's a shocking statement. Jesus would use a natural illustration, birth. Every one of us experienced birth. As if he was saying to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, as you, were, as you were born physically into this world, you have to be born spiritually in order for you to enter the kingdom. I'm not talking about observing the law. Nicodemus was shocked. This is new for me. All the while, we heard in the synagogue, we preach it in the temple, that a person enters the kingdom of God by observing and following the law, or even by membership to Judaism. And the Lord continued to explain, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit, Nicodemus, the Holy Spirit with a capital S, gives birth to Spirit. And I could imagine the face of Nicodemus bewildered and he was surprised. And, and Jesus would say, don't be surprised, Nicodemus, if I say to you, you must be. As if Jesus is saying, there is no other way, Nicodemus. The wind blows. Maybe that night, the wind blew. And the Lord said, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone who is born by the Spirit. Can you imagine? Here comes a Pharisee with the doctorate of the law, and he could not understand what Jesus Christ was talking about. How can this be? This is new, Lord. I, this is my first time to hear such a teaching. And, and the next verse is, is awkward. You are a teacher of Israel, Israel's teacher, Jesus said, and you do not understand what I'm telling you? You're supposed to be the teacher of all these things. You studied the law. You studied the Old Testament. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. And, what, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people, referring to the religious leaders, you do not accept our testimony. Jesus continued explaining, I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Nicodemus, I use natural illustration, birth. Everybody experiences birth. Wind. Everybody feels the wind. And you don't understand. For us, maybe it's not that really big for us. But for Nicodemus, this is something very, very strange. And the next verse would really explode the mind of Nicodemus. Look at this. Jesus continues saying, No one has ever gone into heaven. And I could imagine Nicodemus, yes, that's the reason, Lord. Walang nakapunta sa langit at wala pong nanggaling doon. That's the very reason why. It's really hard. And Jesus said, no, no, no one has gone to heaven except the one who came from heaven and that is the Son of Man. Here at this juncture, Jesus is implying something to Nicodemus. I am the Son of Man. No. 
Walang masyadong dating sa atin. But for Nicodemus, it's either he tore his robes and said, you're blaspheming. We, the subgroup in the Pharisees, we believe you're a rabbi. But for you to claim that you are the Son of Man, the promised Messiah, uh, hold on. That's, 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 that's too much. And even before Nicodemus could react, Jesus continued by saying, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And here, Nicodemus was able to connect because he's familiar of the Old Testament. You know, the background of this Moses lifting up the snake happened in the book of Numbers chapter 21. The Israelites were delivered from Egypt, remember? And they were marching in the wilderness, going to the Promised Land. What happened? They were murmuring, complaining to God and to Moses. Have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no food here. So they keep on complaining and arguing and disrespecting God and Moses. And you know what God did because of these stubborn and stiff-necked people? God led them in a place in the wilderness where there are venomous snakes that would come out at night. And many Israelites were beaten by this poisonous snake. And those that were beaten died. And the people started to realize we have done something wrong. So they went to Moses and said, Moses, please pray for us. Our children, our parents are dying. Those that are beaten are dying. Please pray we have sinned against you. They started repenting. And Moses went to God, to Yahweh, and prayed, Lord, please heal and interceded for the people of Israel. And you know what God said to Moses? Moses, I want you to make a serpent, a brazen serpent, bronze. You hang it on a pole, Moses, and tell my people that those who were beaten by the snakes to start to look at the snake, the brazen serpent, and when they were beaten and look at the snake, they will be healed and they will live. So that's what the Israelites did. Those that were beaten started looking at the snake and they got healed and they lived and they did not die. Here comes Jesus using that story, able to connect to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was saying, I, I, I remember that story. Uh, now I remember that story. And yet the second portion of that verse, it was hard for Nicodemus to understand. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, I know that. So is the Son of Man must be lifted up. And the next line, that everyone who believes in Him may have life eternal. Oh, ops, ops, ops. Time out, Lord. You mean, do you mean behave? That everyone who behaves will have eternal life? No, 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 Nicodemus. Not behaves. Believe. Lord, this is too much. You know, I was brought up as a Pharisee. The only way to gain favor before God is to behave properly, obey the law, behave, do good works. That's what we were taught. All the while, Lord, our understanding was wrong that entering into the kingdom of God is not by behaving. But the Israelites were behaving. Do not, go to, do not work on Sabbath. Do not. A lot of regulations were given. Sabi ni Lord Nicodemus, yes, Nicodemus, you hear me right. Whoever believes in Him will have eternal life. The following day, they met with the subgroup and the group of the Pharisees who were seeker, secret disciples and believers, they met and they were excited. Okay, what happened, Nicodemus? Can you explain what did you hear from Jesus? And Nicodemus, I could imagine, he was saying, okay, guys, sit down. This will take me a long time to explain. It is so difficult to explain. Nicodemus and his friends continued to follow Jesus from afar. They would, they would follow Jesus, but not directly. From afar where there's a group of people there, the miracles are happening. They would just be behind the scene and listening and watching what Jesus Christ is doing. They don't want to be associated as followers of Christ. But they would hear. And they would know what Jesus Christ was doing. Jesus started gaining popularity. And in chapter 4, if you will notice in the, in the book of John, he visited Cana of Galilee where he turned the water into wine and healed the son of a royal official. They heard about it. And in chapter 5, Jesus healed the invalid man. For 38 years, they heard about it. Nicodemus and his friends were just contemplating and reflecting in their hearts what Jesus Christ, and observing and listening and investigating and searching the scripture. Chapter 6 of John they heard about the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 people. He was in the temple sharing and the crowd in the temple could not take his words because he was as if he was saying and claiming that I have exclusive relationship with the Father. And the people got mad at him. And the religious leaders heard about the complaint of the people. So what they did, they leveraged on the complaint. The chief priests and the Pharisees sent the temple guard. What the chief priests did, called the temple guards. 
Okay, guards, <clears throat> this is the time. I want you to go and arrest Jesus. Yes, sir. So the religious leaders, the chief priests, and the Pharisees were waiting, 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 waiting. They were waiting and they were discussing. It took many hours. Finally, this is funny. John recorded, finally the temple guards returned, went back to the chief priests and who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? Where's Jesus? And here comes the temple guards reporting, where is Jesus? We sent you to arrest him. Listen to the next, the response of this temple. This is really funny. I find this very hilarious. No one ever spoke the way this man does. Apparently, they were listening to the sermon, sat down and enjoying the sermon, and they forgot about arresting Jesus. You mean to say he has deceived you also? Kalit na. Huwag niyo sabihin sa akin na kayo din ay naloko din itong Jesus na to. Tandaan niyo, binabayaran namin kayo ha, para arrestuin and then you failed us. Listening to your sermon, boss, naanto kami, pero ki Jesus, grabe, very convicting. And the high priest stood up and turned to his fellow leaders and said, Is there anyone? Has any of the rulers, any one of us, believed in him? Oh, I could imagine Nicodemus and the subgroup were looking at each other and winking and, Ano, magsasalita na ba tayo? Are we going to sp are we gonna speak now? Nicodemus raised his hand slowly, slowly. Nicodemus, who had gone to earlier with Jesus, asked a question. Nicodemus was saying, I, I want to make it clear, no? Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm just going to ask a question. Does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he's doing? Are we condemning him without trying him first? Wow. They replied, Are you from Galilee also? Are you from Galilee too? There is no prophet. Walang sinabi sa prophecy in the Old Testament that a prophet will come out of Galilee. You know why? Jesus kasi was not from Galilee. Tama ang scripture, the Messiah will be born in the town of David, Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But he grew up in Galilee. They don't know that Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem. In, he was fulfilling the, the, the prophecy. You know what happened to that meeting? It was not, it was an open ending. Uh, arguing, arguing, and then went, they went home to its own home. Adjourn. And you know what happened? They continued to follow. The Pharisees were observing. Nicodemus and his subgroup continued to follow Jesus from afar and from a distance and continued to observe and listen to the sermon of Jesus. And their faith was growing slowly and slowly. Then what happened in chapter 8 of John? A woman was caught in adultery. Maybe they were there. They were at the background and trying to listen. What would Jesus do to this woman? To their amazement, Jesus did not condemn the woman. And he said, neither I, I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And they were, how come Jesus can forgive sins? And then the event followed by a healing of a man born blind in the temple. Remember in chapter 9, a man born blind and, and there, was, there was a commotion in the temple and the born blind was called by the Pharisees and they were saying, what can you say about the man who healed you? Ang sabi ng lalaki, the only thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. What was going on? No one did this miracle in Israel. Then the, the one encounter that traces the blood pressure of the religious leader in chapter 10. Chapter 10 came because they heard Jesus saying in the temple, before Abraham was, I am. What do you mean? You're not even 40 years old. And sabi mo, bago si Abraham, nandung ka na. Because Jesus was talking about his, his deity. That before, before I was born, in the human flesh, I existed before. That's why he said, before Abraham was, I am. Breaking point when Jesus said, the Father and I are one. Damput na sila ng bato, and they would like to stone Jesus. And Jesus escaped. Chapter 10, they were so angry at Jesus. But the peak that triggers everything to plot and kill Jesus was when he raised his dear friend Lazarus from the dead, who was dead for four days. And they saw Jesus, they were from a distance, from afar, observing what Jesus would do. And he, Jesus stood at the, outside, the, temp, outside the, the, the tomb of Lazarus and he started praying to the Father. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And they saw with their own eyes, Jesus called Lazarus from the dead. Basahin yung chapter 11. And many believe, even priests believed. Then follows the plot to kill Jesus. Sabi ng mga high priest, oh, this is enough. 
If we will not put an end to this madness, Rome will be very angry at us and they will destroy us. We have to kill Jesus now. So what they did, divide and conquer. They talked to Judas, offered Judas 30 pieces of silver, and Judas betrayed his master and sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And they, they, they arranged, when are we going to arrest Jesus? Let us know. Give us a signal. And the high priest called the temple guards again. Hey guys, hey boys, do not fail us again like previously. We will send you, you better arrest Jesus. Yes, sir. But how do I arrest? How do we recognize him? It's in the evening. Don't worry. We have a go signal. The Judas is insider. The one he kissed on the cheek. That's the one. Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek. And even Jesus said, what a kiss of betrayal. And that evening, Jesus was arrested, dragged to Pilate, Pilate to the high priest, and he was sentenced to death. I could imagine Pilate was saying, I found no, no ground for this man to be punished. If you don't punish him, you are not friends with Caesar. And now Pilate was put in a situation about loyalty now. Now you are tying my hands. So what Pilate did is to whip Jesus, thinking that if I will whip Jesus, made him whip by the, the Roman soldiers, that the people will be satisfied and say, okay, tama na yan, release nyo na, nahagapit na eh. Nahagupit na. So when Jesus was, was flogged and he was presented, what shall I do with the king of the Jews, your king? And one of the crowd, or the crowd were saying, we don't have any king but Caesar. You know that for a Jew to say that is blasphemy. Because their God is their king. And Pilate washed his hand and saying, I have nothing to do with the blood with this man. Go and take him. And Nicodemus and his subgroup were crying and broken and they could not believe that the Messiah was, Jesus was being put to the cross. And they were following Jesus probably from afar as Jesus would walk step by step carrying the wooden cross to Golgotha. And every step of the way their hearts were bleeding and they could not understand, they were confused. What is going on? And when Jesus was placed on Golgotha and the crowd was there, and you can only see, can you imagine the head of the crowd? The head, so many heads, and, and Nicodemus and his friends were just afar so from the background and observing. And when Jesus was slowly being lifted up, slowly being lifted up, and when Nicodemus and his subgroup saw Jesus lifted up to the cross, it dawned, it dawned on them. Nicodemus remembered, that's what Jesus Christ was telling me that night. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so is the Son of Man will be lifted up. Now Nicodemus understand. No, Lord, this is the one you're talking about that night. That anyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. At that moment, Nicodemus understood everything now is making sense to me. And then all of a sudden, Nicodemus remembered the prophecy of Isaiah. Surely He took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered Him stricken by God, smitten by Him, and afflicted. Now Nicodemus can un could understand. Now it's making sense, the prophecy of Isaiah. But he was pierced. He remembered the prophecy. He was pierced. His hands were pierced and his, his feet for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Nicodemus and his friends, maybe they were crying. And now it's making sense. They could see that they are in the midst of the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel, or prophecy of Isaiah, everything now is being put into its proper place. We are all like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the sin of the world. I could see the tears of Nicodemus and his friends. Now it's confirmed. How could we miss this in the scripture. How could we so be, be blinded by all these things and miss this beautiful, this, the message of the scripture? He understood that we will never enter heaven. We will not enter heaven because we behave, but because we believed. It is not by observance of the law. It is not by doing good works that we earn the merit or merit the, the favor of God and His righteousness. 
It is by believing and trusting the finished work of Jesus on the cross. That's the message of Holy Week. That's the very message. And you notice, the Bible tells us later, while these things are happening, while Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, a person by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy person, maybe part of the Sanhedrin or the, or, or the Sadducees, the wealthy leaders, was no longer afraid. He was part of that subgroup with Nicodemus. He went to ask Pilate for the body of Christ. Now he was not afraid anymore to want to go into the light and say, I am a follower of Jesus. You know why? Because Joseph was a disciple, but secretly because he feared the Jews. But this time when they saw that Jesus was lifted up and whoever believes in him will have eternal life, it gave them courage to continue. Usually, according to history, the bodies of the criminals, no one would claim for fear of persecution. What the people would do, the Roman soldiers would get the body of the dead criminals on the, on the cross and put it in a cart and drag the cart and dump the body in the, what they called the Gehenna or the lake of fire, the garbage place in Israel. Now listen to this. Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate. You really love, you want to honor the body of your cousin or your, or your friend. You would buy and bribe a Roman soldier. Joseph of Arimathea did not bribe a soldier. He went directly to the top authority, to Pilate. Not afraid to be associated with Jesus. Pilate was surprised. You mean to say he's dead already? It's a matter of hours only. You know, for someone to be crucified, it will take days, if not weeks, for the person that was crucified to die of dehydration and loss of blood. He sent a centurion. Summon a centurion and asked him if Jesus is already dead. And when, when Pilate learned that he was already dead, he gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea. I'm not sure, but probably Joseph of Arimathea bought the body of Christ. How much is the price? I like the body of my Savior. He was accompanied all the while Nicodemus was there. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, who, the man who met Jesus earlier that night and brought a mixture of mirror and aloes, about, about 75 pounds because they were familiar with the Jewish custom of embalming. So they knew what, what is supposed to be done. But because it was already Friday and Sabbath is about to happen or to come, they have to rush up and hurry to embalm Jesus. So taking the body of Jesus Christ, they, they wrapped it and with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish custom, burial custom. And the Bible tells us that Joseph of Arimathea donated a brand new tomb near the place where Jesus Christ was crucified. This is the backstory I was talking about. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea are heroes of Easter. You know why? Because if God did not use these two secret disciples, they would have dumped the body of Jesus Christ in Gehenna. If no one could claim the disciples were not there, the natural way is for the soldiers to dump the body of Jesus. And you know what? Worse will happen. If Jesus was dumped, the body of Christ was dumped in that garbage Gehenna, and on the third day he rose again, then people would discredit the resurrection and say, Hindi talaga siya namatay, nawalan lang ng malay. That's very important because resurrection is the key and the epicenter of the Christian faith. Praise God for Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They played a crucial role of, role of getting the body of Jesus, put it in the tomb to ensure God used them so that resurrection, the Easter Sunday, will happen after a few days. Amazing, no? Maybe we are not part of, of the main event. Maybe we are part of the backstories where people can meet God. Maybe we're the one who sent the email of invitation. Maybe we're the one sending them SMS every day for them to get to know the gospel. Maybe we are not the main. We are not the one who led them into Jesus Christ in prayer. But we were the one who were involved in the backstory of leading the person to Christ. Maybe you're sharing to your office mate today or your friends or your cousins or your office mates. Jesus was crucified. He died. And he was buried. This is very important because you only put someone in the grave, those that are dead. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. Never the disciples expected Jesus to rise from the dead. No wonder Mary and the ladies early in the morning went to the grave, brought some spices. Maybe they were thinking, it's only the boys who prepared. Maybe it was not complete. Maybe they went to complete the ritual. 
That's why when they saw the, she, she saw the tomb open, Mary said, who took the body of my Savior? No one of them. They thought the cross was the end. But to their surprise, Jesus was no longer in the tomb. The suffering and death of Jesus and his resurrection, listen carefully, is not an afterthought of God. No wonder in the Old Testament, Jesus was called the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. The cross, the burial, <clears throat> and the resurrection were pre-thought of God. It is important that the resurrection will take place. Because just like in the Old Testament, the priest, the high priest, is only going to the Holy of Holies once a year to offer the blood of the Lamb for the forgiveness of the sins of Israel. You know what happened in the Old Testament? The priest would wear a robe with small bells because if he entered the Holy of Holies with sin, he would die in the presence of Yahweh. And no Levite can say, excuse me, there's a curtain that divides the holy place and the most holy place. No one could say, excuse me, Lord, we'll just get the body. No one can enter because if you enter with sin, you die as well. So that's why they put the bells in the, in the high priest's garment so that they would hear and they tie something here in the priest. And they would hear the priest, if the bells is ringing, they would hear that he's still alive. And when the priest comes out of the Holy of Holies, it means God accepted the sacrifice for the sin of the world. That's what happened in the resurrection. Christ rose from the dead, which means he has completed and successfully accepted the ransom for all sinners. That's the reason why we worship on Sunday. We declare that we have victory in Jesus. This is the lesson that I'm trying to bring across to all of us today. This backstory of Easter reminds us that right standing with God is received not by behaving, but by believing in Jesus and what He has done on the cross for you and me. Maybe our understanding of entering the kingdom of God or heaven is, Pastor, I was born in a Christian family. My parents are Christians. That's why I'm going to heaven. No. Or maybe your understanding is, Pastor, I go to church every Sunday. I try to do good works. I feed the poor. Or maybe you're saying, you know, because I follow the scriptures, I obey the commands of Jesus, you're not going to heaven because of behaving. You know why? Because if it's by behaving that we enter heaven, hindi na sana bumaba si Jesus Christ to die on the cross. But the problem is even if behaving, we can only behave for a while. And after that, we return to our sinful ways. Our problem is deeper than behavior. Let me repeat the words of Jesus. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so is the Son of Man must be lifted up so that anyone who believes may have life eternal.